I recommended in my last screencast that you sign up for Google's two-factor authentication. I'm going to go over some more of the details. I've been using it for a little over a week now just to let you know how it's been working and if you're concerned about certain things. I know I felt like it would be far more limiting than it actually is. So you go to your account security settings and click edit and it gives you a short kind of overview of the process. So the basic idea is you enter not only your password, something you know, but you also have to enter a code from your phone and that can be sent via text message, a SMS text message, a actual voice call where it reads you the code, or a an application that's called the Google Authenticator that's available for Android and iPhone. And with those two combined, so something you know and something you have, you're able to log in. So it means if you were to lose your password, a person would not be able to log into your account, which is a good thing. Just to go more in detail, you're going to enter in your email and password as you normally would. Once you've enabled two-factor authentication, it will ask you for the verification code every 30 days. So it's not something you're doing every time you log in. But when it does ask you for the verification code, you either go to your phone and get the text message, you have it call you, or I found the most, the simplest method is to have the authenticator app so that the nice thing about it is it doesn't require any network or data to be connected. It's simply running all the time and generating six digit codes every 30 seconds. So you can then use those codes to log into your account and you're set for another 30 days. The other major difference with two-factor authentication is that there are some applications or devices that don't support this additional verification code, which means you can't log in with your normal password because that's not going to work. It's, it requires you to have this verification code. So the way they've worked around this is to allow you to create other passwords that only work for this email login like your old account used to work. You would simply enter in your email address and this application specific password. And it seems like there's been a lot of negativity about this saying oh it opens up a whole bunch of other ways for someone to get into your account and while that is true to some degree these passwords don't let you log into the web interface so you can't change the password of the account. You can't change the settings of your account, like the any sort of account management all has to be done through your primary login. So these are limited access, kind of limited use. For instance, they could delete all of your email, but hopefully if you've backed that up, they wouldn't be able to really affect you too much and you could simply revoke that application specific password if you don't know which one it was you could revoke all of them and regenerate them so it still leaves you in control it's not like it is any worse than it was before of course whenever you're adding security you're trading off some convenience so it is certainly less convenient than having a single email password combination for everything but after hearing about Matt Honan's story I'm willing to deal with a little more inconvenience and, and I'm hopeful that Google will improve this a little bit to make it even more efficient. One thing I think is a bad practice is that these application specific passwords can be used on any device so if you set it up for Outlook it could be used anywhere else too and that doesn't seem necessary it seems like those should only work on the device that they were created for and I have a feeling it's more difficult because it's it's a challenge to identify where they're coming from and you don't want to have them working for a while and then stop working. Another note is I'm not sure how long these last everything I've seen seems that they last indefinitely until you revoke them so that's convenient but uh, might be problematic if you had one that was somehow revealed but they are 16 characters long they're certainly unlikely to be brute forced, you know, simply guessed, and it really seems like a, a limited access. It's certainly, in my mind, no worse than having, if you have no authentication, two-step authentication, 
then you're worse off than in this case, since they can be revoked easily and managed, and certainly 16-digit passwords are unlikely to be cracked by anyone. So moving right along, once you decide to go with two-step authentication, you go to the setup. And the first stage of that is where they will send you the configuration for your phone to enable your phone to work for that. So you get a verification code on your phone and then you verify that device, which means you've enabled the device. You can use multiple devices if you wanted to use your iPhone and say a tablet or some other device that supported it. But for simplicity, we'll just go with a single device. And so once you've done that, you can then install the Google Authenticator app and that will allow you to not even require internet access. You know, you could be in a remote desert and still be getting your verification code, not that you'd really be logging in. It seems unlikely you're going to be logging in on a web device without having web access somewhere. But in any case, it's pretty convenient. So it does work on Android devices, on the iPhone, iPod Touch, or Blackberries. And I think Blackberries are probably on their way out, so I wouldn't get too excited about that. But it is nice to see that they have very complete support for all of the major major ones. And you can, like I said earlier, still use normal text messages, which covers virtually any phone out there. So once you've gotten it set up and working, you will find that some of your other applications may stop working. And when that happens, you go to the application specific password section of your authorizing applications and sites page and create a new application specific password. Once you've created it, you don't need to remember it. You simply use it for the device that you're logging in with and then forget about it. So for instance, uh, Google Chrome Sync doesn't support two-factor authentication, so it requires you to create an application-specific password for it. So any of your machines that you're using with Chrome, if you're using the Chrome Sync, you'll need to generate this password. And I do recommend creating a separate one for each, in this case, browser, but each device so that you can easily revoke it. If, you know, say you lost your laptop and it had Chrome syncing, you could just revoke that and all of a sudden Chrome wouldn't be able to sync anymore and you wouldn't allow the person who stole it to do anything bad in your account. The process of logging in seems a little complicated at first, but this table kind of gives, gives you an overview of how it works. So the traditional password, that's your standard login that you use with your email now, stays the same. You don't need to change it. And whenever you log in, you do need a verification code that you don't need to remember. You simply pull it from your phone or the Google Authenticator app when you need it. And that's once every 30 days. That is per browser. So if you have different computers with the browser installed and running, you're going to be logging in every 30 days. But that's really not all that much different than logging in every 15 days with your traditional password, the standard way. And it does give you quite a bit of security. And then the last kind of login code that you're using is the application specific password. Those are 16 letters and those are used for other applications that don't support two-factor authentication and those you don't need to remember either. And you'll use those just in the password field so they're just a, the same password as before just like you were logging in before even enabling. One other thing to note, let's say you lose your phone or your battery dies in your phone and you need to log in, you've hit that 30 day mark, they do allow you to generate 10 one-time use verification codes. What that means is the moment it's used, it will no longer be functional. What I've done is printed those out and stuck them in my wallet. And when I come across a situation where I need the verification code, but for whatever reason don't have access to my phone, that I can use one of those codes and I cross it out to make sure I, I make a note to myself that it's already been used. And then you, you validate it for another 30 days. Lastly, if you decide that ah, it's too much effort, I don't want to deal with two-factor authentication, 
One thing you can do, which still increases the security of your Google account, is to add a phone number. And the way that they'll use that phone number is to challenge people if they try to hijack your account, like they're trying to take over your account. They can send you a verification code to that number in case you lose access to it for whatever reason. It can also provide a way to verify that you own the account. So these are all ways that help you to maintain control of your account. If someone's trying to take the account away from you through whatever means, if you have your cell phone, this can help you get your account back. So some people argue, who needs two-factor authentication? I'll just add phone number to my account, leave my normal email and password, and, and go about it that way. And that certainly does help. It it doesn't protect you from someone actually getting your password. You know, for instance, a keylogger, if you were on some machine that happened to have a keylogger and they were able to get your password, they would be able to log in even if you have a mobile phone. Now, you'd be able to get it back, which is a good thing, but it doesn't keep the original attack from working. So two-factor authentication is a little bit inconvenient. I've found it not to be that big of a deal. It's kind of nice or it makes you feel good when you're logging in to know that no one else can log in. You have your your phone right there and you can get the verification code so it gives you kind of a warm fuzzy feeling that no one else is is hijacking your account I'd recommend you do it if you're at all concerned about the security of your Gmail account